This shirt is actually my life. Hey guys, it's Haley. Welcome to my channel. And today I thought that it would be fun to give you guys a list of baby things that you do need and baby things that you just don't need. With me having three kids, I feel like I've had a very extensive like crash course on baby essentials. <laughs> so I just thought that I would share that with you guys in case you are wondering what to buy for your baby. Diaper bags. With diaper bags, you want something that's going to be cute, but you also want something functional. You want something that's not too big. You want something that's not too pricey. I really think that just diaper backpacks are the way to go. And I'll tell you what. My favorite diaper bag, I like to use backpacks versus a regular diaper bag. This was my first diaper bag with my oldest daughter. It's a little bit dirty, so don't judge me. This was amazing. It's not too big. It is, or it was at the time, a very cute pattern. And the coolest thing about it is that it has this strap on it to where you can use it as a satchel bag or you can use it as a backpack. And I loved this. Mostly I used it as a backpack. It's just easier when you're trying to get your kids in the car, you're leaning down to put them in the car seat. You don't want that bag to be like swinging around and getting in the way. It's just easier if your backpack is on your back. It doesn't move, it's there. And also if you're out and about on like a day trip to the zoo or something like that, it's on your back. You don't have to fiddle with it. It's just, I just like backpacks so much better than regular bags. Now, something you can use instead of a diaper bag is the diaper clutch. I was super big on these because I didn't always like to carry a big diaper bag. Sometimes it's just not practical. Sometimes, you know, it's just, you just don't want to deal with all that. Especially like if you're breastfeeding and you don't have to carry bottles, formula, water, you know, if you're breastfeeding, it sometimes it is just a lot easier just to carry a little clutch like this. And you can get this in different colors. I just like the blue one. But it comes with this little wipe case that you can put your wipes in just like this and it has velcro on the back of it and the clutch it has a little velcro piece right there but you can stick it in so it doesn't fall out and then on the inside I have you know a diaper for Madeline diaper for Ridge and then I don't know if you can see it but it has like these little pockets that you can put like your money and your ID you know your debit card, whatever, whatever you want to bring. And what I'll usually do is I'll just put this in my bag, like my purse, and take it. Or sometimes, like my daughter Sophie, she likes wearing backpacks sometimes. She has this one little backpack with Princess Elsa on it, and she loves it. And sometimes I'll put this in her backpack and have her carry it around because, you know, let's be honest, mama doesn't want to carry everything. <laughs> carriers. I hate them. Hate them, hate them, hate them. They're so, They, okay. So like all of these little baby pouches and like kangaroo pouches and the wraps and the ergo whatever it's called, they're just not practical. They're really cute. They're really trendy, but they're awful. They always have a ton of straps or, you know, clips and knots and, you know, you got to wrap around you 20 times and it's just, who has time to sit there and fiddle with that? Like, for real. If you're going somewhere, you don't have time to sit in the car for 30 minutes to figure this out, to wrap your baby up, and by the end of the day, your back's going to be killing you, you're going to feel like you were pregnant all over again. It's just... It's just ridiculous. Like, what are you doing? And also, I live in Mississippi, so it's freaking hot outside all the time. And I don't want baby wrap sweat stains all over myself. No, thank you. It's a mess, and I don't want to deal with it. Don't waste your money on a baby carrier, honestly. Unless you live in Minnesota, where it's cold all the time. And... No, not even then. Not even then. I, I don't see the point in them. Baby bum brushes. Now, these, 
When I first saw them, I thought, oh my gosh, do people actually use those? But they really are fantastic. Alright, I have, I have a blue one for my Sun Rouge, but I didn't bring that one in here. This is the normal size, and this is the travel size. It is super cute. It's so little, and it comes with this little case that you can just throw in your diaper bag. And basically what it is, is a silicone, like, spatula that you can use to put diaper cream on your um, baby's butt when they get rashes. And it's just very nice because you don't have to use your finger and get, like, cream underneath your fingernails because usually diaper cream is really thick and it's hard to get it off with just a baby wipe. You can't always go wash your hands after you change a diaper. Like obviously you'll have like some sanitizer or something but you can't always go wash your hands and get all that stuff off. So this is super super convenient to just slap it on real quick <laughs> and wipe it off and you're good to go. So that's really nice. A baby swing is the best thing. If you buy any big thing, let it be a swing. Babies love movement. When you're pregnant and you're walking around all day, you know, your baby is usually not moving around too much. And then when you get home at night and you lay in the bed like you're going to go to sleep, that's when your baby starts kicking. And that's because they're soothed by you walking around all day. And so a baby swing is an easy and it's convenient way to soothe your baby because when they're really, really fussy and they're tired but they're fighting it, you know, a lot of babies sometimes they'll go to sleep in the car, and the swing is the same idea. You just put them in their swing, put some music on, and usually, at least with mine, it works really, really quickly to calm them down and get them to go to sleep. A swing, I say, is a must. Baby shoes. Baby shoes are something that you really just don't need. With the exception of, like, special occasion outfits, like... If you have like a cute little pair of shoes for like Christmas or Easter or like Halloween or something like that, like that's really cute. That's adorable. But don't buy shoes for every day of the week before they start walking because they don't use them. Half the time you're going to forget to put them on them anyway. It just doesn't make sense. Now, like I said, if you have it for a special occasion, that's cute. But don't be like, oh, I'm going to put these crocheted sandals on Sally just because it's Tuesday. Like, who's got time for that? I don't. I surely don't. Next thing, pack and plays. Pack and plays are super, super convenient. I love them. Pack and plays are really convenient if you're tight on space. Like, my husband and I, when we had our son Ridge, we were actually living with my dad while we were waiting to move into this house. We were staying in my old bedroom, <laughs> so we didn't have a lot of room for a lot of things. And a pack and play was just really, really convenient because number one, they can sleep in it, obviously. Number two, the pack and play that we had had like this changing mat on it. You know, the ones that like swing over. You could change them on one side, put them to sleep on the other side. It was very convenient because we didn't have a lot of room. And you know, a lot of pack and plays that have the changing tables with it will also have like this little bag that hangs off the side of it where you can put like their diapers, you can put their wipes, their cream, you know, anything that you use, you can just have it right there. You can even have like a little change of clothes right there. And especially if you go out of town a lot, you can fold it up and take it with you. It is, you know, they're usually very easy to break down. It's a good one-stop shop for everything that you need. Bumbos. I love bumbos. A lot of people are like, oh, that's a waste of money. You don't need that. Blah, 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 blah. To them, I say, <laughs> bumbos can be used so many different ways. Some of the time they come with these little trays that you can, they can eat with them. They almost always have little seat belts that you can sit them in. Bumbos can be used for feeding time, play time, bath time even. I always used my bumbo. I would put it, obviously when my kid got a little bit bigger, I would set them in the bumbo and put them in the bath and wash them down that way. And it was just always really convenient. My son, Ridge, uh, currently has his bumbo at our dining room table. I don't really like to use high chairs because, you know, like you have to turn around, feed the baby. Babies, like, 
excluded from dinner and that's that's no fun i don't like that i like to have him at the table like our dining table has a bench ben bench <laughs> bench and i put his uh bumbo in the middle of the bench and he can sit with us and eat dinner and he's just like in on the action you know what i mean i don't want him to be in a corner because he's in a high chair so i love bumbos bumbos are super convenient maybe bathtubs I don't like them. I don't like them. I feel like they are a waste of space. I never used a baby bathtub. I just feel like when your babies are little, you mostly just wash them in the sink anyway. And then by the time that they're bigger, you can just put them in their bumbo. I don't really know what else to say about that. I didn't use them. Waste of space. Waste of money. You don't need it. The thing that I use is a formula dispenser. Now, if you're not breastfeeding, which, I mean, I breastfed my kids up until they were about six months. That seems to be my limit for some reason, but formula dispensers are amazing, especially like if you're just going to be gone for like the afternoon or like all day. You know, these have, and I've seen them with four, but mine only has three, these little slots that you can put formula in and it has a little lid so that it comes out. And I think it holds 9 ounces per slot. 9 ounces. It's usually with formula is like 1 scoop per 2 ounces. So that's like 4 and a half scoops. So it holds a lot. It's super convenient. Especially like when your kids get a little bit older. I like to put snacks in it. Like I have another one in the, in the kitchen that just has snacks in it. And I'll usually put like Cheerios on one side. Jelly beans on the other side. And then like those little puffs, you know, like the little baby puffs that look like stars. I'll put those in there. And it's just like a little easy way to carry like some snacks for your kids when you're out and about. I also use jelly beans to uh, bribe them for good behavior. <laughs> it's just easy. This little thing is called a Snooza Hero. And this thing is amazing. It's so amazing. It's like a little SIDS monitor. A lot of times when babies are little, they have this thing called sleep apnea where they forget to breathe and this just helps with that. Basically, it has this little clip on the back of it that you can hook onto the baby's diaper so that it sits on their belly like this. And the way that you turn it on, you push this button right here on the side and it's on. And this purple thing is a sensor. I don't know if you can see the light flashing, but when they breathe and it hits the sensor, it'll flash green because baby's breathing. That's good. And if they stop breathing, then I believe it's for like 10 seconds. If they stop breathing, it'll vibrate. And what that is, is to wake the baby up so that they can start breathing. And then if they continue to not breathe, an alarm will go off. And when that alarm goes off, that's to let you know as a parent that your baby's not breathing, you gotta do something about it. So to turn it off, you hit both buttons and now it's off. And this was super, 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 super amazing when my son Ridge was born. He had the cord wrapped around his neck and so he got some fluid in his lungs and he ended up getting pneumonia and he had to stay in the hospital for a while. When he came home, this was amazing. I used it with all three, but that was just an example. Number five, co-sleepers. You know, the co-sleepers that like you put in the bed with you. It's a cute idea. You know, oh, family bed. We're all going to sleep together. I don't like them. I don't think they're very safe, honestly. And the reason that I say that is because most of the time their barriers like let down. I mean, obviously, so you can like comfort your baby but like my husband is a very heavy sleeper and I was always just afraid he would roll over the bed in his sleep and like sling his arm over the baby and like smother it. I've just heard way too many horror stories about parents smothering babies in their sleep because they didn't wake up and it's just it's scary to me so I just I don't mess with co-sleepers. talk about is called a shopping cart hammock. I see these all the time at the grocery store and I just think to myself like what are you thinking for real? Like number one 
you have this little hammock and you have to, when you get to the store, you have to go get the buggy, you come back, you put the hammock in the cart, you have to get your baby out of the car seat, put him in this hammock. Number one, that thing doesn't look safe. That thing doesn't look sturdy. I feel like my baby's just going to flip over like in a real hammock and they're going to be face down in the bottom of the cart screaming at me like, Mama, why'd you put me through this? I'm not dealing with it. And number two, if you're out and about shopping and your people see that your baby is not in their car seat, like they're out in that hammock, people are a lot more likely to come up to you and try to like talk to your baby, touch your baby, kiss your baby. And it's like, no. No, no, no. This is my baby. It's not your baby. Don't touch it. And I know that sounds mean. I'm not trying to be mean. People have germs. People don't always have common sense. And they don't know that it's not okay to come up and kiss on a stranger's baby. So I just feel like with this hammock, you're inviting people to come touch your baby. And I just, I don't want to deal with that. I'm not dealing with it. And the last thing that I'm going to talk about today is a bobby pillow. A lot of advertisements say, you know, bobby pillows, best way to feed your baby, it's best way to breastfeed, blah, 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 blah. It's really not. You don't really need them. You really don't. I have one because I was given one. Half the time, you're going to forget to grab it. When your baby's hungry, you're just going to sit down with them and you're going to be like, dang it, I don't have a pillow. You're going to forget to use it. It's not the most comfortable when you're breastfeeding. I feel like it holds your baby up too high. The main thing that I use mine for is a prop-up pillow. If they want to sit on the bed or sit on the couch or something, I'll prop them up. A real pillow would do the same exact thing. That's just what I use my boppy pillow for. If somebody gives you one, then that's great. But I wouldn't suggest running out and spending your money on one. That is my list of things that your baby does need and things that your baby don't need. Now, remember that this is all my opinion. These are things that I used and I loved or hated. You're certainly entitled to your own opinion. If you disagree with anything that I said, leave it in the comments. Let me know. If you like this video, just hit that like button and subscribe. Let me know if there are any videos that you guys want to see, anything that I can do to improve this channel, and I hope y'all have a good day.